Hi guys, my name is Mohamed Avan Bhatt. I study in 7th grade and today I want to start vlogging. So for my first vlog, I'll be reviewing the book The Reluctant Fundamentalist by Mohsen Hamid. And I'll talk about it in detail. First of all, I'll talk about the plot, then I'll review it. And then after that, I will recommend two more books by Mohsen Hamid that I'm sure you'll all like to read. So first of all, let's start with the plot of the book. The plot of the book actually revolves around a, guy, a Pakistani guy named Chungais, an American guy who are talking in a cafe, and Chungais reveals his life story to him. So in the beginning of the book, we have the same American guy. He's sitting in a cafe, and he sees that a bearded man is looking at him from another table. This bearded guy is none other than a protagonist, Chungais, who apparently comes from a very rich family that had been suffering from financial crises at the time, due to which he had to make a future for himself, and he had to get a scholarship. So, he does that, and he gets a scholarship at Princeton. There, he's an all-around student, and he gets good grades and does all the extracurricular activities. Now, after this, once he finally passes out of Princeton, he applies for a job at a company named Underwood Samson, which is apparently a very big company in the universe where this story is taking place. And there, he meets the guy who was interviewing him, whose name is Jim. He's the manager of the company, and he sees eye-to-eye -eye with him because he apparently knows that he's doing this pride for his family, who had become bankrupt. And he relates to him because he apparently came from a similar child. He was apparently brought up at a similar childhood. And so he becomes his mentor. Now, after that happens, he goes on vacation to Greece with his fellow students. And there he meets this girl named Erica, and they immediately become friends. Now, Erica reveals that she had a boyfriend named Chris who passed away because of colon cancer. And she was very emotionally attached to him and as, they, as they'd been together since their childhoods. And it's due to that, that she had fallen into depression for two months after her, his death. But now she had finally moved on and now she was writing a novel, a novella. And that novella was going to be sent to a publishing agent. After the, At the end of that chapter, we're told that Erica lives in New York and Chungate's job is also in New York, which gives them an opportunity to continue their relationship. In New York, he meets his fellow employees on his first day of the job. One of his colleagues is a guy from the Barbados named Wainwright. And for those who don't know, the Barbados is a place in the West Indies. So this guy Wainwright and Chungais, they become good friends. And after this, they actually get their first assignment, which is in the Philippines. Now, in the Philippines, they have to review this music company. And when they're in the Philippines, Chungais goes to a hotel to stay there for the night, and there he sees on the news that the 9-11 attack has actually occurred on the U.S. mainland. And due to that, when he returns to the U.S., he's strip-checked strip -check at, strip at the airport first by the security personnel, and after that, he's allowed to leave. After this, his next job is in New Jersey for to review a cable company. And when he goes there, every time he has to commute, in a car and when he returns from the building where he does his work and goes to the parking lot where his car is parked he sees that it's been deframed you see it has its windows shattered and its tires puncture sometimes it has some slurs written on it and he gets mugged once or twice due to which he starts to lose his faith in the american dream and loses his hope of becoming a normal american citizen and so he tries to evolve into an american and change his whole personality but this eventually backfires for him. So actually after this, he goes on a vaca he goes on a short leave and goes to visit his family in Pakistan. There, they're all very happy to see him and he finds out that at this time there is an Indo-Pakistan war going as well. And he remarks that America never assisted Pakistan during that war, even though Pakistan assisted America during the Afghanistan-US war, even though Pakistan and Afghanistan are supposed to be like brothers and they should have this whole brotherhood. And he started to despise America for doing all these things. After this, he finds out that Erica has again fallen into depression because her book, it was never published by the publishing agent and she lost her will to write. And so she's taken to a rehabilitation center. But it's around this time that one day he gets a message and he finds out that they can't find her and her body is missing. They find her clothes at one place in the woods all neatly folded, but they can never find her body. And as such, they assume that either she's committed suicide or something else horrible has happened to her. And it's after that Chungais goes for his final assignment, and that's in Santiago, with this guy named Juan Batista. And Juan Batista has 
a book publishing company, which is a bit ironic in my opinion, you know, his beloved, his life actually died because of a book, book publisher, you know, family depression because of that. Anyways, so Juan Batista, he seems like a nice guy, and he actually awakens the spark of hope in Changes once more, and tells Changes that there's something the corporate overlords don't see in him, that he had hope for America, that he'd be, that, you know, he wouldn't be subject to all the racism and all the struggle that he had to face. So it's when he hears, hears these motivational words that he decides to leave the company. And when he leaves the company, the company actually supports him because they start to fear him because, you know, even his own colleagues, you know, most of him who, you know, barely shake hands with him or barely know him, they all start to fear him. The only person who still respects him and has his dignity is actually Wainwright, but that's amongst his colleagues. The only other person who still respects him is Jim, who still acts as a sort of father figure for him and says that if he ever needs help, he's still there. And Wainwright leaves by hugging him. So after that, he returns to Pakistan and there he becomes a human rights activist and he makes his students, actually now he works in a university as a lecturer, and there he makes his students you know, rally and he organize a organizes a lot of rallies and because of that he becomes a sort of prominent figure in Pakistan. And after that, we find out that this was just a while back bef before this story actually starts in the beginning of the story because you see it's a story within a story and that brings me to my review so first of all what i like about this story is that like i said it's a story within a story and that's encased in two plots we have plot a and plot b plot a is what this whole story is mostly about the story within the story and plot b is just the outside story that acts as a cover for this second story to be in by this i mean that Plot A, or story A, is the story that Changiz is telling, and plot B, or story B, is just the story of the American guy and Changiz at the cafe, which is a lot short. Now you see, what's special about plot B is that it still exists, even though you just expect it to be there because it's supposed to be there, because without it, it won't make sense to have a plot A that's in case within plot B. But, you see, even plot B has its own unique story, because Changiz in various points at the book, he actually shows, you know, he actually cuts his story short, you know, you know, cuts off from the main context of the short story, just to make the American guy see what's going around him. For example, at one point the lights go out and then they come back on. He draws attention to that. And he flushes out even the smallest details, like his dad first wore glasses, now he wears contacts. Or, you know, Wayne Rifle being from the Barbados and his father loving to watch cricket matches over and over again, especially ones from the 80s. And it's that that makes me love this book. Now, finally, to review two more, finally to mention two more books, I suggest you all to read. And these are both by Mawson Hamid. First of all, we have How to Get Filthy Rich in Rising Asia, which is about a guy who's from some slum, and he just becomes, you know, a slumdog millionaire kind of, it's a slumdog millionaire kind of story where he becomes rich, but not like in that movie, but by you know, going on a game show, but instead, this happens by doing what? By becoming a hustler. He starts selling water bottles. And it's an amazing story. But in the end, he doesn't find a satisfaction until the very end of his life. So that's just beautiful. And the other one is Moss Smoke, which is actually Moss and Hamid's first book. Now, I'd actually like to tell you one or two facts about The Reluctant Fundamentalists. It was actually shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize in 2007. And with that, I'd like to conclude this vlog i'm sure you all loved listening to me well my dream is to one day become a very influential you know youtuber or you know just so i just want to be a good person but one day i hope that i'll be able to do something amazing so for those who are still listening thank you very much for listening to the very end take care goodbye